React Native comes with different project folders for the different platforms that it is targeting and you might need to make some tweaks to these projects when you are ready to publish your application. Now these project folders are designed to be opened within the different IDEs for the different platforms and that is what we will demo in this tutorial. So let's go. We start off with the bare bones React Native application that is designed to show the text Hello Fem in a nice big font on center of the screen with a nice blue background. Now we can run this application directly from over here, but the objective of this lesson is to get some familiarity with the different project folders, which are in Android and iOS. Let's first focus into iOS. And within this folder, we have a file with the extension XE workspace, which stands for Xcode workspace. This is the file that you can use to manage your iOS project within Xcode. We launch Xcode and then select open project or file. And then within the file selector, we open up our project, then the iOS folder, and then this XE workspace file. Now, once this workspace opens up within Xcode, you can see that it contains a demo React Native project. Within the project folder, we do have the source code, so you can modify it further if you want to go beyond what React Native provides. But for now, let's run this app as is. You can select the simulator that you want to launch, and for us, we will go with iPhone 13 Pro. And then in order to launch this app, you press the big play button. This will kick off the process of building our application and then launching our simulator. It is also going to automatically check if Metro is already running. And since it isn't, it's going to launch that for us. Once that completes, the simulator is launched and then our app is launched and you can see it working. This time started from within Xcode without having to do anything on the terminal. And once you are happy with the results, you can stop it from Xcode as well. Similar to how we have Xcode for iOS, we have Android Studio for Android. Now we don't actually really need to open our project within Android Studio because a lot of the changes for Android we could probably make directly from within Visual Studio code. But just so that you have a bit more professional experience working with React Native for Android, let's open up our project within Android Studio and see how we can run our application. We launch Android Studio, click the open button to launch the file selector, navigate to the root of our React Native project, and then from the root, specifically select the Android folder. This folder is designed to be used with Android Studio and should open up without any issues. You can see our demo React Native app has been picked up as an Android project. And similar to iOS, we have the source code over here if you want to go beyond what React Native provides. Now, in order to run our application as is, we would select the app that's already been picked up. We would select the emulator and that's also been picked up. So the next thing is obviously to press the play button. This will build our application using Gradle, which is what Android developers use. Then it will launch the emulator. Once the emulator is launched, it will install our app and then start our application. However, it will not work as is. The error message that you will get is actually quite helpful. Fundamentally, it's saying that Metro is not running. Unlike iOS, Android does not start Metro for us. And the second issue over here is that we need to set up an Android debug bridge port forwarding between the emulator running our app and our host operating system running Metro. Starting Metro on its own is something that you are already familiar with. We open up a terminal at our project root and execute npm start and this starts Metro. Next, connecting this instance of Metro to the instance of the emulator started by Android Studio is pretty easy as well. Within a new terminal session, we execute adb reverse to set up a reverse proxy between the ports tcp8081 on localhost as well as on the emulator. With these two simple steps done, if we jump back to Android Studio and press RR to reload our app within the emulator, we can see that our application has started working as we expected. Now, fundamentally, React Native is an iOS or an Android application that loads React Native core, which then runs our app. And hopefully you gathered some of that in this lesson. Most commonly, you would not need to modify the source code within the individual project folders as you would be working with JavaScript from the project root. You can continue your React Native journey over here. Thank you for joining me. Smash that like and subscribe for more content like this. And I will see you in the next one.